You say, though, I mean, Trump wants to go into negotiations with the upper hand, but for China, it has to be win-win or lose-lose. Yes, because China can't afford to be seen to be bullied. I think China is prepared to give in quite a lot but, and, and prepared to meet the U.S. more than halfway, but it cannot be on the basis of being bullied. But what would be the impact of the fallout of this trade war? I mean, you know, in terms of uh, the supply, global supply chain, what do you see happening, especially now that you're in this business of logistics? It's keeping us all very busy. At any one time, there are hundreds of thousands of containers floating across the Pacific, and people are not sure what tariffs will apply when they arrive. People are rushing. Rates have shot up. I mean, carry logistics, we've got actually to turn away some business. Uh, but, but this is only in the immediate term. There will be a cliff after that. And in China, we hear that uh, production is being uh, slowed down. So companies are preempting. Preempting for the short term. Preempting tariffs in the short term. Yes, but they're also uh, re-diverting some of the production processes. How so? Where so, to? So we find uh, distribution centers, for example, returning from China to Hong Kong. We hear a lot of activities uh, from China to Taiwan in order to avoid uh, trade sanctions in the future. So there is not only trade diversion, there's also investment diversion. And I think Southeast Asia will be the, the major beneficiary of investment diversion in the medium term. But right now, the markets are not reflecting that. In fact, the emerging markets in Southeast Asia are feeling the impact of this trade war. Uh, which countries will benefit then in terms of investments now? Oh, I think Vietnam is a major beneficiary. Thailand, Myanmar, and also the smaller countries like Cambodia and Laos. Uh, connectivity is improving. And many companies, they do not want to be in, in the line of fire. And when they are thinking of the next factory, then they are less likely to put it in China. And it can be a Chinese company too. This whole process is accelerating a longer term trend in China, which is to share uh, lower level manufacturing. It's been going on for some years now. And uh, China in turn is becoming a bigger and bigger consumption market. It's becoming a major demand engine in the world. And we're seeing a sea change, all being accelerated by this trade war. Mr. Yeo, Singapore is very exposed to trade. Uh, in fact, it's the most open economy that we know. Could Singapore be impacted? Could growth be at risk? Is Singapore worried? Oh, I'm bullish for Singapore because Southeast Asia is likely to do very well from a new influx of investments coming in and it will continue for some years. And Singapore serves Southeast Asia. Also, the many free trade agreements that we have guarantee us a uh, almost special access to many economies, despite a breakdown of the WTO system. Yo, this is David in Hong Kong. Uh, very nice to see you. I was just having a look at uh, your company's revenues for the last quarter and how that split across the region. You get roughly about a third, correct me if I'm wrong, about a third from China, a third from South and Southeast Asia. The rest is basically split uh, between the other markets. How are you aligning your business with with all, you know, with the trade spat and perhaps these changing uh, alliances. Is that something that's a conscious effort in your part in how you plan your business long term? Well, in the, in the medium term, we are benefiting, in the short term, we are benefiting from all these uh, trade war anxieties because of trade diversion. And uh, so the numbers are looking up a, a little bit more. Uh, we are doing very well in Hong Kong and in Thailand, and, and we're building up our portfolio in Southeast Asia. We see China giving a big push to Belt and Road uh, because of uh, the trade war. They want to diversify out of being the major final, export, uh, final product exporter to, to the US. So we're going to see uh, in the coming years uh, 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 further developments in the Belt and Road. And Southeast Asia will be a, a very important part of it. For carry logistics, we've since 2014, uh, been giving emphasis to Belt and Road. So we've expanded our operations in the, not only in Southeast Asia, but also in South Asia, Central Asia, and the Middle East. So we are pretty well positioned for the, for the longer term future. Uh, just tell me, George, here as well, is it going to be purely an organic way of actually going the business or inorganic? And I give you an example, Air China's parent is, is planning at the moment to consolidate its air cargo and logistics divisions. Uh, they also are going to be selling stakes in that. Do you come and buy some bolt-ons there, or what do you do? Do you ignore it, or do you look elsewhere? 
No, we are alert for opportunities. And when, when, there's, uh, up, when there are upheavals, there are also more opportunities. So we, are, we know what we want to do, which is to consolidate our position in Asia, both broaden and deepen. Uh, we are looking at specific sectors like pharmaceuticals, like uh, cross-border e-commerce, like cold chains. Uh, but we, we move opportunistically. If, if there's a good deal, if there's a good fit, then we will look at it very seriously. A very quick question. Where are the holes in your business that need to be filled and what are you doing about filling them? Uh, Southeast Asia, we intend to uh, greatly expand our presence in Southeast Asia. We are building up the greater Mekong region uh, nicely. Uh, we've got to give more emphasis to Indonesia in the Philippines. And in South Asia, uh, we have high ambitions. Uh, I mean, South, South Asia will develop on its own because of India, uh, quite apart from China. And this will give us uh, a, a broader base in the future. But across Central Asia, uh, with the growth of rail freight, uh, there's another interesting story uh, which we are part of. We bought a 50% stake in the Lanzhou uh, rail freight company, and that's coming along nicely. Are you looking for more G JVs in China? Oh, yes, 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 opportunistically. And uh, it's not just China, but China with Russia, China with Kazakhstan. And I'm surprised by the number of uh, Russian speakers that we are recruiting, both from Russia and from other countries in the OCIS.